Welcome students, welcome to industrial preferred power session. In this session we are going to see about the components of pneumatic systems. Under this component of pneumatic systems, this session we are going to see about the FRL unit. What is this FRL unit? F stands for filter, R stands for regulator, L stands for lubricator. These three units are called service unit or FRL unit. These three units are in bunch and are installed on pneumatic pipelines. Compressed air passes through these three units one by one. So this is the industrial, industrial device of FRL unit. FRL unit. We first see about the air filter. There is a F for stands for filter. The construction of a simple air filter is depicted in the following schematic diagram. Let's see the filter construction. Air filter consists of a plastic bowl attached to the body of the filter. The filter element called cartridge is also attached to the body at the center. So this is the plastic bowl. This is attached to the body of the filter. The filter element called the cartridge. So this cartridge is also attached to the body at the center. Both cartridge and bowl can be removed as and when required and can be reattached. These two can be removed and reattached as whenever we needed. There is a water trap, water tap to remove collected, conden collected condensate water at the bottom of the bowl. So this is the condensate water tap. The air inlet and outlet are created in the body of the filter. So this is the air inlet uh, pass flow, passage flow and this is the air out passage flow. Working. Now see over the working of the air filter. The compressed air which is unfiltered enters through port A and comes into bowl. So the compressed air the unfiltered compressed air enters into the air, uh, port A. It enters into this bowl. It has no alternative than to enter into the filtering element. Because only one outgoing flow is there. So there is no alternative passage flow. So it must flow through this, through this filtering element. The special zigzag passage created in the filtering element arrests the micron and submicron particles and the clean air goes out through port B. So this filter having a zigzag passages created in the filtering element which arrests the micron and submicron particles so that the clean air goes through the goes out through port B. So filter element. So it is a sintered, it means powder metallurgy process, sintered cylinder and uses metal wool as a filtering material. The filter also acts as a water trap. When air enters into filter bowl through port A, it suddenly changes its direction. During this moment, the moisture particle present in air drops down due to inertia. Moisture particles are heavy and they cannot change the direction with air. So the moisture is collected at the bottom of the bowl. So okay, this is the filter element. When the compressed air enters into that, there is no way, no other option to go out, only this way, so that the compressed air go this way. So when it goes out, the fil the micron and submicron particles is collected in the filter level, and the same time, when if the water having some, if the air having any moisture, it will condensate and collect it in the bottom of the filter. So this is the actual image of the air filter device. So you can see when the air enters into it and it enters into it, it is goes through the foreign particles will collect it here.
dirty air enters the filter through directional lowers which forces into into the filter so liquid particles and heavy solids are thrown out against this so it is collected so liquid collects at the bottom of the bowl and is removed by the automatic drain assembly as liquid builds up the flow rises causing the drain to open and the liquid is released and finally the air passes through the filter element to remove the remaining solid contaminants now let's see about the regulator the pressure regulator the construction of a simple regulator is depicted in figure this is the construction of a simple pressure regulator the metallic body of a regulator has inlet and outlet port this is the inlet and this is the outlet port there are two springs one is light spring and other is main spring so this is the light spring and this is the main spring the main spring can be compressed by spring adjusting screw so this is the spring adjusting screw uh, using this spring adjusting screw this main spring get compressed or expanded and the diaphragm is attached to to main spring this is the diaphragm this is attached to this main spring now let's see about the how this regulator pressure regulator is working the compressed air coming in the regulator is having high pressure so we have to reduce it as per the requirement of circuit so or otherwise it will destroy the circuit so when main spring is compressed by moving spring adjustment screw upward the diaphragm will move upward this upward movement of diaphragm will lift the valve valve element upward creating an opening to allow the air flow from inlet to outlet so this is the spring adjustment screw when you move, when you adjust this screw upward direction so that it will move upward so that this this diaphragm which is attached to the light spring screw this will move up so that it will create a small gap small opening it means when we move the spring uh, the spring adjustment screw upward so this diaphragm will move up so that it will move the spring upward so that it will create the small gap a uh, small opening it will allow the compressed air in the opening of the valve and thereby the pressure of air flowing through it will be directly proportional to compression of main spring when the spring compression is less then amount of opening will be small and there will be a slight pressure reduction it means in the high pressure air when it gets into this flow in the small flow high if it is high pressure more than the more than it is required by the circuit it means that high pressure air it will brings it will press press this diaphragm down so that it automatically the spring also come down the screw also will come down so that it will close this opening if it is high pressure than more than the required pressure it will bring enters in uh, the air along high pre high pressure air enters into the flow in this passage it will bring it will press this tire from down so that the spring also come down so when the spring compression is less then amount of opening will be small and there will be light and there will be slight pressure reduction if spring compression is more it means if high pressure is coming more pressure is coming more pressure is air is coming then there will be a more reduction hence regulator is actually hence this regulator regulator is actually a pressure reducing valve so this is a actual image of the pressure regulator now let's see the construction and working principle of the lubricator so first we will see the working principle of lubricator as we know the lubricator is a device which mixes mist or fine spray of lubricating oil into the compressed air this air with oil particles enter into the pneumatics pneumatic equipments and oil particles and this oil particles lubricate the sliding or rotating parts or pairs of equipments so this arrangement enhances the life of equipments hence lubricator is must now we'll see how to obtain fine spray or atomized spray of lubricating uh, lubricant oil this spray is obtained by venturi effect the details of this effect is given below 
okay we'll see this details the arrangement shows only principle of working of lubricator the actual lubricator is having different shape so we are just to see going to see about the how this principle is working but in actual image it will not like this when compressed air enters through port a okay when compressed air enters through port a okay part of it goes to the tube b so part of the compressed air goes to the port b down it will be the there is a small lubricating uh, lubricate oil tank and exerts pressure on surface of oil so part of the uh, compressed air going to this port b so that it exerts pressure on the surface of oil so that through this pressure exertion this lubricating oil goes to this passage and come to this way this throat section okay that means when compressed air passes through throat section the air pressure drops and lubricate oil from pipe c rushes to throat section in the form of spray yes when through port b when air flows through port b it rushes and exerts pressure so that in through through this passage c this lubricating oil flow and it goes through the small session so that it will go in uh, it will rushes in the form of spray as the air goes further crosses throat section and enters into venturi position d okay when air is going through this throat section this spray will mix it with the air and in and uh, when it comes to the d section this section the air with atomized spray of lubricated oil we get so the pressure again builds up due to divergent portion and air plus oil droplets goes out okay so let's see the actual construction of lubricator it is having transparent plastic bowl through which we can see the lever of lubricating oil so this is a transparent plastic bowl so that we can see how much the lubricating oil is present inside so venturi is located in the body of lubricator here it is a venturi this venturi here it is located in there are two parts of parts in body one for dry air in and other for lubricated air out so this is dry air in and this is for lubricated air out oil pickup tube is immersed in lubricant oil so this tube is called a oil pickup tube this is immersed in the lubricating oil working let's see the working when dry air comes in with pressure the vacuum comes in with pressure the vacuum is created at the throat section okay so here the vacuum is created in the throat section the lubricating oil rushes to throat section through so that when vacuum is created when vacuum is created here so that the lubricating oil rushes to throat section through oil pickup so that the oil is goes to this oil pickup tube so that it goes here and goes to the lubricating section it goes the oil rushes to the throat section through this oil pickup tube and enters into this venturi tube so that air plus oil goes out to circuit the final the figure shows actual construction of lubricator based on the principle of venturi effect that is discussed earlier so this is the actual image of the uh, lubricator so here it is uh, transparent uh, passage is there so that we can find how much lubrication oil is there this is the actual frl unit so this frl unit is like three close friends they stand hand in hand in every pneumatic circuits so it is comes in a full in single unit so this figure shows frl units actually used in circuits so this is a symbol of frl unit so this is a symbol of filter and this is the symbol of regulator and this is the symbol of lubricator um, this is the combi combination of frl unit filter regulator lubricator and it is a simplified form of the lubricator uh, frl unit so from the given symbol you can easily make out that one line or figure from each unit is taken to form composite symbol so dotted line on the left is taken from the symbol of filter so this is a simplified thing this dotted line represents the filter 
and center the pressure guard symbol at center is taken from regulator and small vertical line on right is taken from the symbol of lubricator so this small vertical line mention uh, shows the lubricator the pressure guard symbol so three boxes are combined in rectangle this is a very simplified form and this is the actual form of iso symbol for frl unit and this is a simplified form of frl unit now let's see how this uh, frl unit uh, works in industrial this video will describe how industrial pneumatic systems work. These five types of components represent the most common elements used in these systems. The ultimate goal of this entire collection of components, in most cases, is to create motion that will do some type of work in an industrial setting. Pneumatics is one of the most widely used technologies to automate repetitive processes. Some common applications might be to move product from one place to another, or to press or clamp pieces of a product together. To best understand how the system works, we will start at the beginning with a compressor and follow the process through to the end goal of motion. The compressor generates the energy that powers the system in the form of compressed air. In order to generate compressed air, the compressor draws in atmosphere from its surroundings and squeezes it or confines it into a smaller space, creating the energy needed to drive the system. Once compressed, the air needs to be dried and cleaned so that harmful particulates such as rust or dirt does not clog up the moving parts in the system. The compressed air will travel through a tube or line to the next component, called an air preparation unit, or FRL. FRL is short for filter, regulator, and lubricator, which are common pieces that make up the air preparation unit. Typically, the first unit in the air preparation system is what is called a bulk liquid separator, which circulates or spins the air using specially shaped veins. The rapid circulation of the pressurized air sheds unwanted moisture due to centrifugal force. The next unit is a filter, which further removes particulate and moisture in a two-stage process. Just like in the bulk liquid separator, a series of veins or louvers in the filter circulates the air in the first stage. In the second stage, the air passes through a screen of sorts, called an element, in order to catch unwanted debris. Once dried and cleaned, it is common to adjust the level of air pressure coming out of the compressor. This adjustment has an impact on how much force the system generates. Higher pressure allows the actuator to put out more force, and lower pressure creates less force. The regulator achieves this using a spring-loaded assembly. The knob on the regulator adjusts the force of the control spring to achieve a desired pressure set point. Whenever the downstream pressure level drops lower than the desired set point, the poppet, or internal valve, opens a pathway for the higher pressure upstream to flow downstream. This continues until the pressure in the system reaches the regulator's set pressure. At this point, the poppet or internal valve closes until there is a new downstream demand. It is also common to have a pressure gauge on a regulator so the user can monitor downstream pressure. Finally, in specific applications, such as air motors or pneumatic tools, a lubricator can be added to distribute a fine mist of lubricant into the compressed air to help lubricate downstream components. Now that the compressed air is clean, dry, and set to the correct pressure for the application, the next step is to direct it where to go to create motion. A directional control valve is used to achieve this task. Thank you, students. Thank you for watching this session. Let's see you in the next class.